my research group, we study sharks and rays. These are really unusual animals because they've been around for a long time. The lineage leading to sharks and rays is about 400 million years old. And these animals have persisted for all that time. Yet, they have a bunch of traits which makes them seem as if they should not be around. They live a long time. They don't have many offspring. They take a long time to mature. And so they don't regenerate themselves very quickly. Yet, in spite of those attributes, they persisted. And in my group, we try to learn about these animals using genetic information. And so one of the things that we do is we compare DNA sequences. And closely related species have similar DNA. Distantly related species have more distant DNA. So by comparing DNA sequences, we can essentially reconstruct a phylogeny or an evolutionary tree or a pedigree of who is related to who. That tells us how these animals have managed to make a living over the past 400 million years. We also use DNA sequence information for other things. We can use DNA in the same way as 23andMe does to understand how these animals move. People that get their 23andMe uh, evaluated find out perhaps that they've got 5% African genes and 4% Swedish genes. So they're essentially finding out where these genes or these alleles come from. But we can do the same thing with sharks. We can detect when they move. We can see the genetic information that we see in some of these animals may originate from a different part of the world. And this tells us how they've moved from one place to another. So we're essentially using the DNA in both these circumstances as a device, as a marker, if you will, a little tag to tell us about their evolutionary history and about their movements. Each person's genome is like a time machine. It has information in it which records not only their individual history, but the history of their lineage. And buried in this time capsule is a whole host of information. And with the whole genome information, we can detect when populations were smaller, when they were larger, and we can also detect historical migration events. So my research group looks at DNA sequence information to reconstruct all sorts of attributes about these animals, their evolutionary history, their movements, their historical changes in population size, their historical changes in movements, and we can correlate these estimates of what they did with environmental changes. Now, the world is going through a lot of environmental change right now. And if we know how they responded to past environmental influences, then we can get a much better idea about how animals will respond to future changes. Thank you.